Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IES classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss current affairs of 3rd February 2022. In this lecture, we are going to discuss 6 topics which are very relevant from our UPSC point of view. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see the first topic. So first topic it is regarding Inc. India Britain Free Trade Unlock New Opportunity. So this article which is talking about India Britain that is United Kingdom UK free trade and here we are going to see what is that agreement and what is the significance of that agreement and what are the challenges. So this article it is important from your international relations which mainly comes under your GS paper too. And this topic it is at most important from your mains but not from prelims. And next topic it is about a dose of realism. So this article which is mainly talking about our COVID-19 pandemic. So recently WHO gave up with a statement. So regarding that what can be done that is given in this article. So this article is important from your health which mainly comes under GS paper too. And next topic it is regarding creating jobs by increasing capital expenditure. So this article it is regarding analysis of a recent budget regarding this capital expenditure. So this article it is important from your economy which mainly comes under GS paper 3. And next topic it is about marital rape. So already you know that section 375 which mainly talks about this uh, marital rape. Okay, so under this section 375 there is one exception regarding this marital rape. So this article which is mainly talking about process on to amend this criminal laws. So this article which is talking about this section 375. So this is very important from your policy point of view. And next topic it is regarding rupees 3355 crore in MG Narega wages not paid. So it is talking about MG Narega wages. So actually in the recent budgets they said that they are going to decrease allocation for this MG Narega. But on side, on other side, we can see there is uh, wages are not paid for this MG Narega. So this article it is important again from your economy because we are talking from finances side. And next topic it is about Fitch ratings flags high physical deficit target. So this article is important from your economy once again. So these are the six topics. Now we are going to have our discussion. And now let us try to start our discussion with a quote. So this is a motivational quote. I want to motivate you people because prudence is very, very near. So success is not final. Failures is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. So actually this quote which is very, very relevant, especially from UPSC point of view because sometimes it will be taken like five to six years to clear UPSC. For some students, it will be taken just one attempt to clear this UPSC. So this means success is not at all final. So whatever the failures that we are getting, okay, so we need to take them as opportunities and we need to work on those uh, failures. And this uh, quote mainly says that failure is not a fatal thing, but we need to have courage to continue that counts. So even though if you are uh, not clearing the prelims, so even though if you are not clearing the prelims, again you have to restart your preparation and try to clear that prelims, clear means and finally interview and finally you have to clear your UPSC. So courage, it is a very, very important, especially in this UPSC preparation. Okay, so this is the quote. And now let us try to see the first topic. It is regarding Inc. India Britain free trade unlock new opportunities. So this article, it is take, talking about India Britain free trade agreement. And this topic it is important from your international relations, which mainly comes under your GS paper too. So now let us try to talk about this topic in a very great detail. First, let us try to see the central theme. So there uh, are good economic and strategic reasons for an FTA that will spell many opportunities for both the countries. So for the both the countries, so this and free trade agreement will be very, very helpful. So this is somewhat idea regarding this article. So if you're talking about this topic, which mainly says that first, let us try to understand why this topic is in news. So recently, recently India and UK they launched a free trade, okay, formal free trade agreement negotiations, okay. So recently India and UK, they mainly launched this free trade, formal free trade agreement as negotiations. So until then, both countries, they are contemplating an interim free trade area, which will result in reducing the tariffs 
on the most of the items okay so whenever you are going for this free trade agreement then that will be help for reducing of this tariff that means import duty quota etc so that will be mainly decreased so if you are talking about a map so here you can see northern sea and here we have we have this strait of dover so this strait which is mainly connecting this north sea with this english channel and here we have this sagrak strait here which is mainly connecting this northern sea with this karte uh, bay here and here we have baltic sea and here we have atlantic ocean so these are the water bodies which are mainly present in this area so if we're talking about uk which mainly contains scotland england wales northern ireland okay northern ireland scotland england wales they will be part of our they will be part of our uk and here you can see irish sea is present and here you can see celtic sea here we have english channel here we have strait of dover and here we have atlantic ocean here we have northern sea so these are the water bodies which are mainly surrounding or present around this around this a uh, uk so you have to remember this for sure and now let us try to see some facts regarding this what is this agreement all about so both the countries they agreed okay both the countries they agreed mainly on this early harvest scheme early harvest scheme for a limited agreement to lower tariffs on small set of goods apart from easing rules for select services so actually recently early harvest scheme scheme mainly agreed by the both the countries so this early harvest scheme which mainly comes before this free trade agreement and in that early harvest scheme they mainly talked about lowering of tariffs regarding some set of goods okay apart from the services and even they agreed to avoid some sensitive issues okay even they agreed to avoid some sensitive issues and they mainly focused on the areas where there is a more complementary com complementarity so they mainly focused on those areas and next one is agriculture and the dairy sector they are also considered sensitive sectors for india and as well as in trade talks okay and even the important target of this agreement it is to double the trade between india and as well as uk by 2030 by 2030 what are the trade that we have with the uk we need to go for doubling of that trade so these are the some important points regarding this agreement and if you are talking about what is the significance of this agreement so first and the foremost thing here is so we are going to increase our exports of goods okay so the trade deals between this uk and india that will especially boost the exports okay exports and it will be also helpful in creating of this large job creating sectors for example textiles leather goods and foodwear etc and even india also expected to register a quantum jump in the export of marine products as well and we are also coming up with some mutual recognition agreements okay and we are also coming up with some mutual recognition agreements on pharma could also provide some additional market access okay so we are excelling this in this pharma sector so this pharma it is also going to provide some additional market access and next one it is about service trade okay clarity on service trade so this free trade agreement it is also expect it is also expected to provide some certainty some predictability and even transparency and finally it will create more liberal facilitative and competitive service regime as well so here this fta also have some potential for increasing of exports in service sector for example it is nursing education healthcare etc okay and next one is exit from rcep regional economic comprehensive partnership so exit from this rcep okay so india mainly came out of this R rcep in november 2019 therefore there is a renewed focus on this fresh trade deals with us european union and as well as uk such that it will provide some market for our indian goods and services so we're talking about challenges there are two important challenges that you need to remember so first one is delaying of signing this ftas so these agreements which mainly reduce so when we are having this interim agreements before signing this ftas that will reduce the tariffs on some products okay for sure but it will also lead to some significant delays in signing of this ftas free trade agreements right so next one here is wto challenges so interim fta do not graduate into the full fta 
and it can also face some challenges from other countries at this WTO as well. Okay, and this WTO rules only permits the members to give some preferential terms to other countries. Okay, so they will also permit members to give some preferential terms to other countries if they have bilateral agreements as well. So this is the gist of this topic. And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding COVID-19 appropriate behavior. So this article which is mainly talking about this COVID-19 appropriate behavior. So this article, it is important from GS paper to under health point of view. Now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So here central theme of this article, which mainly says that disease prevention, disease prevention and COVID-19 appropriate behavior and vaccination is still necessary mainly to control and mainly to control this transmission of this COVID-19. So we need to focus on prevention. We need to focus on this COVID-19 appropriate behavior and we need to focus on this vaccination. So this is a central theme of this article. So if you're talking about this uh, topic that is COVID-19, so WHO. Recently WHO chief, okay, recently WHO chief that is Dr. Tedros Tedros in the recent briefing, he mainly said that about 90 million, about 90 million cases of this coronavirus have been reported since this Omicron variant was first identified. So since this, uh, since this first uh, variant or uh, that is a new variant of this coronavirus that is Omicron was first identified, it is, it is like 10 weeks. Okay, so from this 10 weeks, we can see there were like 90 million cases of this coronavirus have been recorded throughout the world. And in this way, here this, his statements mainly come in the context that many countries are using their restrictive movement measures and they are mainly coming up with uh, some public fatigue. So because of this public fatigue, so they are coming up with easing of this restrictive movement. And if you're talking about uh, this Omicron from this WHO perspective, so whenever we are going for uh, blanket lifting of restrictions, it mainly poses a problem, right? Because most of the people appear to be believe that Omicron it is less threatening when we are compared to that of other previous variants like SARS coronavirus original variant and even like a Delta variant like that. And people they are thinking that there are two shots, okay, two doses of this vaccines, they are an adequate defense against this virus. But if you see here, if you see the real context, so preventing of prevention of this transmission, it is no longer possible, it is no longer possible and no longer necessary. Okay, because people might be no may might be understanding that this is a very less transmissible and that the severity is very low than compared to the of previous variants. So people will be moving, right? So because of this, here we need to focus here. So even the countries like Britain, France, Ireland, Netherlands, Finland. They are on the path of easing this COVID-19 restrictions. And the same way in India also, there is a current evidence uh, like restrictions movement and the daily case overload had been decreased. And because of this, the several states, they have moved to ease the movement restrictions as well. And in this context, WHO mainly said that this Omicron variant, okay, to mainly to control this uh, spreading of this Omicron variant, we need to take some measures okay we need to follow some covid uh, covid 19 related protocols right so here here this coronavirus it is a uh, dangerous because it will be going for uh, mutations as well whenever this virus which is mainly transmitted from one person to another person it is mainly going for some mutations so because of this mutations there might be the several variants of this coronavirus that will come in the near future okay so because of this we need to focus on vaccination and we need to focus on uh, on giving some necessary doses, especially the developed countries, they will be having this vaccine. So those vaccines should be distributed to these countries which are very less developed or least developed countries. And we need to go up with the framing the pandemic as a war that humanity must win was useful to accelerate the development of vaccines. So first we need to go for increasing of vaccination and the developed countries they need to provide this vaccine to other least developed or developing countries and we need to focus on this development of vaccines or this production of vaccines and we need to follow this COVID-19 appropriate behavior vaccines and accessible health care etc. So this is just of this topic and I hope it is very much clear. Now let us try to see next topic it is regarding 
creating job by increasing capital expenditure so in today's lecture we studied about the highlights of uh, budget this year right and we discussed number of articles regarding that budget so here this article which is mainly talking about capital expenditure and we can relate this topic with our economy which mainly comes in the gs paper 3 and if you're talking about central theme it mainly says that the trust on the capital expenditure is laudable but it comes with the some caveats and risk okay so the thrust on this capital expenditure is laudable that means so whatever the budget which mainly says that there is increasing of capital expenditure it is a welcome step but it also having some challenges so now we are going to discuss the challenges regarding this capital expenditure that is very much important from your mains point of view okay so recently in our budget here our finance minister said that they are going to increase capital expenditure because due to this COVID-19 pandemic many people okay almost all the people uh, who are working in almost all sectors they had been affected and especially people who are working in this uh, informal sector they were they had been affected the worst right so because of this government want to come with some infrastructure potential such that it will be going for creation of the gainful jobs and further it will lead to revival of our economy so if we're talking about data regarding employment in india so data which is released by this ilo international labor organization which mainly says that india's uh, employment to uh, india's employment to population who is above uh, this 15 years ratio which is, had been steadily dropped from 55 percentage to 43 percentage in 2020 so if you are com if you are comparing with the employment to population who are mainly achieving the age of 15 years so it has been decreased from 55 percentage to 43 percentage and in 2020 in 2020 it was like 52 percentage in bangladesh 63 percentage in china 73 percentage in vietnam in india it is 43 percentage and if you're talking about women who are working in this workforce they constitute just 20 percentage of women okay and next one here is 30 and 70 percentage of workforce that are mainly seen in, seen in other three countries okay and if you're talking about cmie data which mainly says that india lost nearly one crore jobs nearly india lost one crore job between this december 2016 and 2021 december so this is one important cause of concern so in this context our finance minister they mainly came up with this uh, creation of sustainable jobs over the time so whenever they are focusing on this infrastructure whenever they are focusing on this msmes they can create a lot of employment in these sectors and if you see in our latest budget speech of 2022 to 2023 budget speech she went all in on allocating ample money towards productive infrastructure investment they mainly focused on this productive infrastructure in, uh, investments this is an important way forward for creating of employment and for the revival of our economy and data which is released by this controller general of accounts okay that is cga which mainly shows that for the first nine months of current fiscal year that mainly present at 2021 to 2022 so the central revenue receipt that is from the taxes whatever the revenue that is coming from the to the government it is stooding at uh, rupees 17.3 lakh which is very much high and there are also many factors that mainly contribute for this remarkable outcome so because the first one is implementation of this gst from this gst also there is high income and this one is higher income tax collections so because of this here then we can see there is a good performance in this organized sector and also we are focusing on increasing of this formalization of the economy and next one here is the government mainly deserves full credit for the conservative budget projections of last year and because of this uh, this budget of the last year they mainly enhance your credibility by coming clean on expenditure which mainly hidden in, in off balance sheet and next one is for the first time in years now withstanding that pandemic and the intense hurt among us this organized sectors and the tax collections for this fiscal year will end ahead of original budget production projections so whatever the original budget which mainly projecting about this uh, about this tax collections so we are going to have more tax collections than compared to that of this original budget projections and this budget uh, with also mainly revised up uh, for financial year 2022 
central revenue receipts to 20.8 lakh crore okay so budget also revised up for this financial year 2022 central revenue receipts to uh, rupees 20.8 lakh crore and it is nearly like rupees 3 lakh crore which is higher than the original budget as well and next one is they also coming up with some additional spending on food fertilizer subsidies increase in allocations and if you're talking about revenue expenses which is mainly uh, very less okay and they are also talking about uh, this subsidies uh, food and as well as uh, further allocations for this engineering uh, scheme okay and if you are going for the sustainable uh, investment especially in infrastructure like roads railways freight corridors power renewable energy along with some product to uh, production in linker incentive scheme and other enabling legislations that will mainly create the conditions for drawing this private sector investments to manufacturing and as well as job creation and even sustainable growth so this is the uh, this is about this topic and if you're talking about especially what are the concerns are mainly focused okay so what are the investment that is mainly talked by this government it is not on all green field projects so if we're talking about infrastructure we will be coming up with the green field projects and as well as brown field projects so green field means nothing but the first hand okay we are going for that project it's a new project and if you're talking about brownfield already the project which is present and we are going for renewable okay so that is called as brownfield that is second hand in short so the 0 0.5 uh, lakh crore of clean up of air india air india's book this year counts the capital expenditure as well similarly in this financial year 2023 the government has already set aside 0 0.8 lakh crore to partly clean up this books of this National Highway Authority of India and as well as BSNL. So these will come under this uh, brownfield project. So what are the money that they want to spend in this capital expenditure that is not totally on this green field project. So this is one cause of concern. And next one is while there is a need, uh, while there is a visible trust on hard capital expenditure, the county outlay for wards critical areas such as education, healthcare, urban infrastructure, they remain substituted here, okay. So what happened in this uh, capital expenditure? So the outlays which mainly regarding this education, healthcare and as well as urban infrastructure that mainly decreased, okay, regarding education and healthcare. So there is less amount of investment that is mainly shown. And next one is, okay, so whenever there is increasing of capital expenditure, there will be also increasing of uh, fiscal debt that is debt of the government as well so because of this increase in the debt here are some measures that need to be taken regarding interest rate that is uh, interest rate will be increased from rbi and even it raises the risk of inflation and higher uh, current account details etc and finally one more important challenge here is execution this is one of the important problem here so center state and as well as local level they need to ensure that the funds are utilized in a timely fashion and we need to go for the world-class infrastructure as well also alongside the ease of doing investments they have to be continuously addressed and we need to focus all around the key areas such as land acquisition contract enforcement and policy stability so whenever i want to come up with this roadways in this area means i need to go for land acquisition first and i look i need to get from uh, clearances from the environment department and there is a need of policy stability so these are the some important way for what that mainly given in this article so now let us try to see next topic this topic is regarding proposes on to amend this criminal laws so this article which is mainly talking about clarify stand on criminalizing this marital rape okay so this is the one question which mainly asked by the cpi to the government and in this context your minister for women and child development she came up with a written reply so this is a context and now let us try to see some important details are given in this article so this will be important regarding your gs paper too under your quality so if you're talking about context it mainly says that government has started the process of comprehensive amendments to criminal laws okay so government mainly started the process of comprehensive amendments to the criminal laws so minister for women and child development smithy irani told parliament in response to the question on marital rape so regarding this marital rape cpi mainly asked a question so in the question mainly to answer this question our uh, minister came up with a written format Letter format means you can talk about here start question and start question okay 
if we're talking about questions that are mainly asked in parliament there will be star questions and as well as unstar question so for the starred question the answer should be given in oral format so whenever the oral format answer is uh, answering by the mp means so there will be the written questions that will be also asked that is supplementary questions but in the written format they are unstarred the star will not be present okay so for those questions here so the minister will go for giving the answer in a written format so whenever answer is in written format there is no extra or uh, we can say like supplementary questions which mainly follows so if we're talking about details it mainly says that government of india has initiated the process of comprehensive amendments to criminal laws in consultation with all the stakeholders at present government of india also started this process of comprehensive amendments to this criminal laws in consultation with all stakeholders so in this context center had taken a position on inclusion of marital rape okay so they may decide to include this marital rape as an offense under this ipc indian penal code so why it is in news if you are talking about the present situation so what is the present situation so recently the number of petitions which are mainly seek uh, which are mainly filed in this delhi high court and these petitions which are mainly seeking criminalization of marital rape they are mainly focusing on criminalization of marital rape right so in this response union government has replied that it is mainly concerned some constructive approach constructive approach towards this criminalizing of this of this marital rape so the petition mainly seeks to amend this criminal law which includes the section 375 of ipc so the demand of this petition it is to amend this criminal law that is section 375 of uh, ipc which mainly talks about rape so i want to show you one interesting infographic here so when rape is allowed by law what will be happens so when rape is allowed by the law here more than two thirds of married women in india who are between this 15 to 49 years they have been beaten up and they are being forced to provide sex and even they or their socio economic position is also be altered so this is according to united nation population fund and not only this one in five has forced his wife or partner to have sex so it is it is mainly according to international men and gender equality survey 2011 and next one is over one or four countries across the world they have criminalized in this marital rape okay and if you see the countries that are mainly present around our our we are sharing boundary for example india saudi arabia pakistan china they had not criminalized this marital rape so if you're talking about what are the issues with this marital rape so some issues here is the first one here is it is against right of women so execution clause which mainly violates the women's fundamental right to equality fundamental right to freedom of speech and as well as expression and it also denies the agencies over their own bodies to the women and next one is dismal state of judicial system some reasons for low rates of prosecution uh, regarding the case of this marital rape in india because of low reporting of crimes women are not coming outside and they are reporting and there is inaccurate method of collection of national crimes record bureau data and also here it is like a lengthy process in the courts and even justice gs verma committee recommendations which mainly said that we need to constitute an aftermath of this horrific nirbhaya gang rape in 2012 and they came up with amendments okay regarding this criminal law amendment act oh, 2013 so these are some important things that you need to remember and what is the way forward so first one is we can come up with a multi stakeholder approach so the criminalization of this marital rape will be a symbolic start for sure okay so we need to go for taking into account different multi stakeholders like uh, for example pers medical personnel so family counselors judges and police okay such that it will be very much helpful and next one is bringing uh, behavioral changes so whenever we want to bring any actual change in the people so we will be talking about abc model affective behavioral and as well as cognitive model that will comes in your ethics so when we want to come up with any change in attitude so we need to talk about this behavioral changes as well so we need to bring some behavioral change in the people such that they will they should not go for a, a marital rape okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic that is says rupees 3358 crore 
in mg narega we does not wait so here i need to know about what is this topic and why this is in news so here recently in our budget our finance minister announced that they are going to decrease allocations for this mg narega right so here already the wages for this mg narega are not paid so what will be the consequences we are going to discuss and even uh, you need to know about some facts regarding this mg narega scheme as well so this article it is important from your gs paper to under governance and schemes and policies of government and even we can connect this topic with our economy which mainly comes in our gs paper 3 so if you three if you see this uh, context which mainly says that uh, this mg narega which mainly stands for mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act okay so the workers on this under this mg narega they are still waiting for almost rupees 3600 3360 crore in pending wage payments okay so there is a pending of rupees 3360 crore and we can see there is a largest pending payments in west bengal uttar pradesh and rajasthan it is according to the government's reply to the question in rajya sabha so in rajya sabha here the one question which mainly asked regarding this pendings so actually the pending which is mainly seen in states like west bengal up and rajasthan so if you see some important details which mainly says that this comes as the center reduced its budget allocation for the rural job scheme by 20 percentage so if you are talking about the revised estimates of current year there is 25 percentage of decreasing of allocations so because of this this question which mainly posed if these pending wages and this material payment liabilities they are carried forward to next year that means if these pending wages are not given and whatever the amount that is required for any metal for the infrastructure then if if, if this is it is carried to the next financial year means it will again further reduce the amount of money which is available to pay for the workers so this is one cause of concern so now let's try to talk about some facts regarding this mg narega scheme so mg narega stands for mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act so it mainly provides 100 day of guarantee wage employment it will provides 100 day of guarantee wage employment to rural unskilled labor okay, to rural unskilled labor and will also increase this economic security and will also decrease the mitigation of labor uh, that is migration of labor from this uh, rural areas to urban areas for example in the rural areas there is a proper availability of work means why this people they will be shifting towards urban areas with leave uh, while leaving their families so it will also decrease a uh, migration so whenever migration is decrease it also leads to decreasing of some socio economic consequences and even it will be helpful for employment generation okay and the scheme which is mainly funded by the central government and the full cost it which will mainly base the full cost of this unskilled laborer and 75 percentage of the cost of the material for the works which will be given by the center itself so the central governments and the state governments they need to work and they need to uh, audit the works okay what is the work that is done they need to go for audit okay and this reports will be prepared by central employment guarantee council and the state employment guarantee councils so this is just of this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding the fitch rating which it is a one of the credit rating agency the title says that fitch rating flags high fiscal deficit target so this article which is mainly talking about physical deficit so whenever there is increasing of expenditure okay and there is decreasing of revenue that means what is the difference between that is present between expenditure and revenue that mainly comes under our fiscal deficit so this is a one basic concept so if we talking about context it mainly says that rating agencies they are not enthused okay rating agencies are not enthused by the fiscal consolidation road map and these rating agencies says that there is lack of major reform proposals in the union budget so in the union budget what are the measures that are taken for this fiscal consolidation so what is this fiscal consolidation so what are the policies and what are the acts which are mainly come up by the government mainly to decrease this fiscal deficit that is called as a physical consolidation so regarding this fiscal consolidation there is nothing like steps to be mainly taken by our government regarding this union budget so this is the thing which mainly uh, posed by this fitch rating company so fitch rating has a negative outlook regarding india's overall rating okay and because of a higher capital index drive uh, capital expenditure that is because of highest capital expenditure and 
we are mainly focusing on employment generation etc so further whenever there is increasing of this capital expenditure that will leads to increasing of fiscal deficit okay so this is the one thing and if you're talking about at present rating of this which here is b b b minus so that means we having a neg like negative sovereign rating in the november okay so this article which mainly says that we need to focus on this fiscal consolidation so the, there is a need of this uh, gradual pace of fiscal consolidation that mainly continues to place uh, on this nominal gdp growth that will be helps to facilitate a downward trajectory regarding this uh, debt ratio so whenever we are going for this fiscal consolidation whenever we are going to decrease this fiscal deficit then this will be very very helpful for resolving this negative outlook of this sovereign rating so this is the thing which mainly said in this article so actually this which mainly expecting this economic growth prospects or uh, economic growth it will be like 10.3 percentage in this 2022 to 23 and there is average of about 7 percentage growth in coming up 5 years okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see the explanation part for yesterday's questions so first question is regarding citizenship act of 1955 so in india citizenship act of 1955 prescribes which of the following ways to acquire citizenship so if you have gone through lakshmi khan there is separate headings regarding this citizenship okay so that is by naturalization by descent by incorporating of territory and by registrations so these four are correct so correct option will be the four all the above and next question is regarding according to the constitution of india article 3 authorizes the parliament to recognize the states uh, with it this authority the parliament can alter the name yes can diminish the area yes can alter the boundaries yes and can increase the size increase area yes so these four are correct okay so correct answer will be the all the above so many of students they gave the correct answer for this questions okay so i will uh, i will encourage you and try to give your answers and explanation part for this question in the comment box and now let us try to see the today's questions so before seeing this today's questions i want to make a small announcement on this platform so if you want to clear this upsc csc so i will strongly suggest you to join this prelims test series and as well as meets answering course that we are we are offering in the Strathodes IS Academy. So these are very, very important because to clear this prelims, you need to go for practicing of some elimination techniques and you need to analyze yourself and how questions are coming. So you need to analyze the trend. So what is this prelims test series is very, very useful. Here we are providing like 30 tests which includes uh, both CSAT and as well as your GS. And this one is a main answering course. So an important deciding factor in your upsc here whether you will clear this upsc or not it is based on your means okay so if you have a good answering skills of this means then you can you can for sure you can clear this upsc okay so here to make or to break the deal you this means plays an important role because here prelims will be the qualifying paper and here interview will not be there in your hands so the only examination that is present in your hands is your means answer so whenever you are doing good in this mains answer, I will ensure you that your name will be there in the final list for sure. So actually the new batch for this mains answer writing course which mainly started on the February 1st and the registrations will be going to be ended by February 8th or 9th. So please be hurry up and try to join this course. This is absolutely beneficial. Okay. So in this course we will be providing you weekly targets of syllabus and within one year. So we are going to complete this entire syllabus of GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4 along with recent current efforts so this course it is designed in such a way like within one year we are going to complete division of our each and every topic of our upsc main syllabus that is gs1 gs2 and gs3 gs4 and on sundays there will be essay and also case study practice so in this course you are going to write 27 essays and 26 case studies and remaining will be the daily one answer so within 365 days we are going to complete this course and i will ensure you that each and every topic at least repeated uh, at least revised twice by you such that you will be having a conceptual clarity so in this course there will be evaluation of your answers there will be the modal answer that will be given and even there will be one-to-one -one mentorship and this course it is absolutely useful so please try to join this course so apart from this we also came up with this entire foundation course for your upsc csc gs and here we are providing like more than 700 hours of video lectures 
that will be absolutely beneficial to clear the concepts and even that will be helpful because we are covering each and every single topic of your syllabus and the next one is if you want to take some individual courses but uh, like uh, for example economy history geography and uh, disaster management environment and ecology like that you can take those courses also right and the next one here is if you want to talk to me directly you can call to this number 8074765513 okay 5513 so i am the academic director of this rathor science and you can trust us okay and the details of this course are given in the description box so please visit our website to watch demo videos of these courses okay so now let us try to see next question that is about article 13 so the term law in article 13 which mainly includes so please choose the correct option here and next to question it is regarding dpsp in indian context which of the following laws programs which are mainly formulated by successive governments in order to implement our directive principles of state policy which mainly comes under our fourth part of our constitution so please select the correct option here so let me know your answers in comment box there is no negative marking here just i want to encourage you people to solve as many questions as possible such that you will be getting the concept of clarity right so by this i am concluding i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathor's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos okay thank you so much